So we dealt with what happens when you multiply radicals, and now we're going to deal with what happens when you divide radicals. Um, the first property they talk about here is um, simply the same thing as multiplication. Division is uh, the top divided by the bottom, obviously when it's in fraction form. And when you have radicals, you can take the radical of the top over the radical of the bottom. The example that they give us here shows the square root of 16 25ths. This property says, well, I can take the square root of 16 and I can put it over the square root of 25. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 25 is 5. So the square root of this fraction is this fraction, 4 fifths. All right? And so this is going to, we're going to do some where they have a perfect square and then we're going to do some where they don't and we simplify it. So let's look at the first example, example 5. They have the square root of 11 over the square root of 49. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split that up, and we're going to say the square root of 11 over the square root of 49. Now let's talk about the square root of 11. Does 11 have a root? No. And it's actually a prime number, so we can't even use a factor tree and simplify it because there are no numbers that go into it other than 1 in itself. It's prime. And so we're literally just going to leave that as the square root of 11. What about 49? Yeah, it's 7, and so that would be the square root of 11 over 7 is the most that we could simplify that. So let's look at B. For B, we're going to say the square root of 25 over the square root of B to the fourth. All right, 25, that has a perfect root. What is it? 5. What about B to the fourth? Anytime you have an even number here, you can just divide it by 2, right? You're not actually taking the square root of 4, four which happens to be 2 as well. You're actually dividing by 2. So it's the little method that I showed you. Take the exponent, divide by 2. It goes in 2 times with a remainder of 0, which means 2 b's come out, 0 stay in. Anytime you have an even exponent, just divide it by 2, and that is what your root is for that. If there's a remainder, because it's not even, your remainder stays in. Um, and so for this one, I'm just going to say the square root of b to the fourth is b squared. And so it would be 5 over b squared. Now, had these not been perfect roots, I would have simplified it just like I did from bell work. So go ahead and try a, b, and c. Check understanding 5 in the middle of page 580. For this first one, they actually both have perfect roots. What is the square root of 144? And the square root of 9? 3. So this is just 12 over 3, and then you simplify it. 12 over 3 simplifies to 4. 12 over 3 simplifies to 4. All right, for this next one, 25 does have a perfect root. What is that perfect root? 5. What about p cubed? This one right here. Well, if I take 3 and I divide it, we always divide by 2. How many times does 2 go into 3? 1 with the remainder of 1. So that means one of your p's come out and one of them stays in. One comes out and one stays in. What about this denominator? Take the 2 and divide it by 2. How many times does 2 go into 2? 1's with the remainder of 0. So that means a q comes out. So that would have been your answer there. Would have been 5p squared of p over q. All right, let's look at this last one. 75 was actually one of our bell works, square root of 75. So when we take that one and we do a factor tree, remember we got 5 and 15 and 5 and 3. So 5 came out. 3 stayed in. That's how I simplify my numerator there. Denominator. 16 has a perfect root. What is it? 4. T squared has a perfect root. What is it? T, right? Because if you take that 2, 2 divided by 2, you're going to get 1 with the remainder of 0, which means 1 comes out. None of them stay in. So that would have been your answer there. 
5 squared of 3 over 4t. So for example 5, we actually took them individually, and then we divided, if need be, like the 12 over 3, right? So we did the roots first, and then we divided after we were done. Sometimes it's easier to divide first, because you'll find that you have something that maybe doesn't simplify as well. If you have a fraction that you can see very quickly that it's going to simplify, go ahead and simplify it first, and then worry about doing the roots individually. So in this case, 88 obviously divides by 11 very easily. What is 88 divided by 11? It's just 8. And so now we have a much smaller number to worry about doing a factor tree for and all. We can simplify the 8. It doesn't have a perfect root, but we can do a factor tree for it. We can say 2 and 4, 2 and 2. And then we have a 2 that pairs up and a 2 that stays in. And so that's much easier than trying to do a factor tree of 88 and then having the square root of 11, which we're going to do in the next problem when you have a square root on the bottom. And so if it very quickly can see that it simplifies, simplify it first and then worry about the root. Look at B. For B, we have 12A cubed over 27A. So 12 and 27, do those simplify? Yeah, what goes into 12 and 27? 3 does. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 27 divided by 3 is 9. What about the A cubed and the A? How do I divide those? Yeah, so I can take one out of both of them, right? So think about it like our um, properties of exponents. We subtract and we get A squared. Or if you are the type that spread it out, we have three A's on top. 1a on bottom, we can cancel one of them, right? Either way, we're going to get a squared on the top. And now we have some perfect roots going on. What is the root of 4? 2. What about the root of a squared? It's just a. And the root of 9? 3. And so that one would simplify just like that. 2a over 3. 2a over 3. So there are times when... Reducing it first helps, and I actually would always reduce it first. Unless you can see like the other one where it was 144 over 9 and you knew you had a perfect square over a perfect square, then go ahead and do that. But if it's something like this, I would reduce first, and then I would take the roots because it's always easier to work with smaller numbers. So let's try check understanding number 6, bottom of page 580. All right, let's go over these. So 90 and 5. So we can reduce 90 and 5, since 90 ends in a 0. We know it goes into it perfectly. And how many times does it go into it perfectly? 18 times. So we're going to look for the square root of 18. All right, and here we're going to use our factor tree, 2 and 9, 3 and 3. You can see that 3 pairs up, 2 does not. So you should have ended up with 3 squared of 2. 3 on the outside, 2 on the inside. Let's look at 48 and 75. So 48 over 75. What goes into both of those? Three, hopefully. All right. So three goes into 48 16 times. And three goes into 75 25 times. So we're looking for the square root of 16 over 25, which both have perfect roots. So you should have ended up with four-fifths here. Four-fifths for this one. And then the last one, we have 27x cubed over 3x. 27 is perfectly divisible by 3, 9. And then x cubed over x, we take 1x out of each. So 1x out of the bottom and 1x out of the top. So now we have x squared. So now we are looking for the square root of 9x squared. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is just x. So you should have ended up with 3x there. 3x. So when you have a radicand in the denominator, it's not really considered reduced. 
All right, radicand meaning a root. If you have a root in the denominator, it's not in proper terms, so to speak. It would be like leaving it like two fourths, which you would never do that. You would reduce it to one half. And so we use a method called rationalizing to get radicals out of the denominator. And the way you do that is, is you actually multiply the top and the bottom by that denominator. And what happens is you get rid of the root. So let's look at what happens when you multiply something by itself. We're just gonna take a few of these and then we'll do these examples. So if I have the square root of three and I multiply it by the square root of three, I'm gonna get the square root of what? Nine, well, what is the square root of nine? Three. So let's say I take the square root of seven times the square root of seven, which is the square root of 49, which is seven. You should see a little bit of a pattern going on here. All right, if I take the square root of five times the square root of five, I'm gonna get the square root of 25, which is just, so what do you see is happening when I multiply a radical by itself? I just get what's inside. So literally, the radical just goes away because I'm squaring a square root. When you square a square root, you get rid of the root, okay? And so this is the method we're gonna to use to get these roots out of the denominator. So if I can't simplify it anymore, then I am going to just do this method. You do wanna simplify first um, so that you know what you need to multiply by, but if it is simplified as much as it can be and you still have a radical in the denominator, you wanna to multiply top and bottom by that radical. So let's look at this first example, A. We have two over the square root of five. Can I simplify that at all? Five is a, five is a prime. There's nothing I can do with that. I, if I do a factor tree, I'm get one and five. Nothing's gonna pair up, it's prime. So this is the type of problem that you would say, well, I'm just gonna multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of five. On the top, I literally just have two square root of five. But on the bottom, I have multiplied the square root of five times the square root of five, which we just saw as the square root of 25, which we know is five. And so on the bottom, I just have five. Now, you cannot simplify these fives right here. The reason is they're not the same number. This top one is inside the root, okay? So it would be like me saying, well, the square root of four and four are the same number. We all know that's not true, right? The square root of four is two. And so the square root of a number and the number itself are not the same, which means you cannot simplify them, all right? I cannot simplify numbers when one is inside a root and one is outside of the root. Now, if I had a five on the outside and that denominator, I could reduce it. Or if I had a five on the inside and the numerator, I could reduce it. But I cannot reduce a number outside of a radical and a number inside the radical. So this is my answer here. Um, this would be the answer to simplifying this. It doesn't look more simple, it's just proper to leave it this way. You don't leave a radical in the denominator. So we have two square root of five over five. Let's look at B, and they did it a little bit differently than I'm gonna do it, all right? So for B, seven is a prime, I cannot simplify it, right? But what about eight? Is eight a prime number? No, it's not, right? What number goes into eight? It's even. Two goes into eight. And so before I do anything, I'm going to simplify this problem. So I'm going to leave my 7 alone, because we know that can't simplify. And I'm going to take that 8, and I'm going to simplify it. So I can see that a 2 will come out, and a 2 will stay in. So I have 2 on the outside, 2 on the inside, and this n also has to stay in. It's just one of them. It will not pair up with anything. So I have this. So this is as simple as I can get it before I get rid of that radical, all right? The reason you do this is if you multiplied by that radical 8n, then you would have to simplify at the end. And so this is to help you simplify before you do it. So now I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom just by the piece that I'm trying to move out of the bottom. On the top, I multiply these. So what do I get if I have seven times two times n? 14n, and that would stay just like that. On the bottom, I have 2, because that's out there. And then I've multiplied a square root of 2n times a square root of 2n. That should just be 2n, right? Does that make sense? And then I need to simplify that piece. The 14 is going to stay just like it is. The bottom's going to be just 4n. And that is actually as simple as we can get that. 
We cannot reduce the 14 and the 4 because one is on the inside and one is on the outside as well as your ends there. All right, go ahead and try check understanding number 7, A, B, and C. All right, for this first one, they have 3 over the square root of 3. Both of these are as simple as you can get them. So we are going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. On the top, we just have 3 square root of 3. And on the bottom, we have 3 times the square root of 3, which we just get 3. All right, square root of 3 and square root of 3. Now, we have a number on the outside on top and bottom that can reduce here. Right, so we have um, a 3 here and a 3 here, which we can reduce. So we end up with just the square root of 3. 1 square root of 3 over 1 is just the square root of 3, which is what you should have gotten there. So if it's on the outside, they're both on the outside, you can reduce it. All right, let's look at the next one. We have the square root of 5 over the square root of 18t. The square root of 5 is as simple as it can get. It is prime. However, 18 is not a prime number. So we're going to take 18 and we're going to simplify that first. You can see that the threes pair up and the two will stay in. So we end up with a square root of five over a three on the outside, a two on the inside, and this T can also not simplify. So that is simplified and now we need to rationalize that denominator. So we need to multiply the top and the bottom by that two times T. All right, on the top, we just have five times two T all in the radical. So we have 10 times T. On the bottom, we still have this three, but we have multiplied a radical by itself. So we just get rid of that radical. And so our last step here, leave the numerator alone. And in the denominator, we have three times two times T. So we have six. T, which is what you should have gotten. Square root of 10 T over 6 T. All right. For the last one, they actually wrote it as the whole thing under the radical, which we know from our first example that we can actually split up. All right. You can actually split up here. 10 does not actually simplify. It's not a radical, but if I take my um, factor tree, I get 2 and 5. So nothing's going to pair up when I do my square root of 10. So even though it's not a prime number, I still can't simplify it out of the radical because there is nothing that pairs up with a 10. It's just 2 and 5. Those are my only factors. So I can just go straight to multiplying here. Multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 10. 7m times 10 gives me the square root of 70m. And on the bottom, we have a square root times itself. So we just have 10. Remember, 70 is inside the root, 10 is outside the root, so I cannot simplify those numbers, and I just get the square root of 70m over 10. one there. How do you know if you have it in simplest form? Well, if you have no perfect square factor, so if you cannot simplify your radical anymore, then your radical is at least in simplest form. If you cannot take a factor tree and get something to pair up and come out, it is in simplest form. Um, no fractions under the radical, meaning the entire fraction should not be under the radical because the denominator should not have a radical. And so if you still have a fraction in the radical, then you need to separate it and rationalize the denominator. If you still have a radical in the denominator, you need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom. And so these are kind of your checks to make sure that you've simplified everything as much as you can and you've simplified all your radicals as much as you can.